Egypt. My name is Aldo Perez. I am the president of the New York Political Coalition. I would like to first introduce Dr. Valdi from the African Advisory Council and the chair of our Interfaith Committee. He will start off with our Interfaith Prayer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace in all human beings. We say thanks, God, to give us opportunity to be here in this particular time. We thanks Him. After everything he has given us, we cannot count how many favors God gave us. Today we are here to talk about a human being who had in her life do what everyone of us would like to do. In this life, only two things human beings can be recognized. Either you do something good or you do bad. We all want to do something bad. May God help us. God said in his scripture, Quran, Hal jaja'ul ihsan illa ihsan. Is any something good can be paid by somebody who has been doing good, nothing except good. God help us. Thank you. Miss Edna Thomas Greener. I apologize. I didn't see her. Um, she's here to sing the national anthem. Please. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail as the twilight's last gleam? Through broad stripes and bright stars, through the perilous fight, over the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare of bombs bursting. That our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave over the land of the free and the home of the at this time, I would like to thank the 52nd Precinct Explorers Honor Guard for being present. And also at this time, I would like to introduce Sheikh Musa Drame of PC7. Thank you very much. And good evening to you all. We are here because God called us to be here for a very, very, very special reason. And we hope that when we walk out of here, we will begin, you will join us to begin to rectify that which needed to be rectified 
60 years ago. And this gathering today is like none before, and we want to make sure that nothing will need to be repeated after today. This December, six years ago today, a group of New Yorkers from all walks of life, from all ethnic backgrounds, from all religious affiliations, from all cultural mixture, came together and decided that the public safety of their families and their communities and their nation at large will no longer be relegated to others. We will fully participate in the remaking of our neighborhoods and we launch Peace December. The objective of Peace December is one and one only, is to create environments where all creatures can peacefully coexist and in the process live harmoniously with the environment. That was our goal. And six years ago until today, we have not deviated from that. A program that was launched by the Courthouse Rotunda with a diverse entities, today is being celebrated in 15 other countries and the demand is increasing. And we are very, very blessed indeed to be doing what we are doing here today. And I hope that from today on, we will completely overhaul the status quo in the Bronx, where a child cannot walk after sunset, where our seniors cannot enjoy their retirement time in the comfort balconies of their hard-earned homes. Where women who have been promised by men in most cases said, I will be there for you in good times and difficult times. I will be at your side at any moment you can depend on me. I will be there for you. You can put your head on my shoulder and you will be safe. And go home and put a fist or knife or gun to that woman's head. I hope after today that will change. You walk into any school, whether it's a junior high school or high school in the Bronx, it is as if you are walking in Rhode Island. Our children who deserve to be in an environment that is conducive for learning and success are now being taught how to live in a prison camp. I hope today we will change that. Now we have individuals that if you look different, if you believe different than what they believe, if your personal choices are different, their goal is to harm you. And this December say no, and I hope tonight we also change that. And we have elected officials who uses ethnicity, who uses different zip codes, who uses different mechanisms to divide and remain in office. While nothing helpful can, can be provided to these communities, I hope today that also will change. And we have religious leaders 
whose understanding of the religious books that they are reading is so tunnel vision that they cannot see anything outside of the tunnel vision. And I hope that tonight will open the four walls so that they can begin to serve the people that they are chosen to serve so that at least we will not have these 15 and 16 and 17 year old gang members whose parents have been the members of this house of worship but who have no comfort but to be part of a crew and we have over 70 gang crews in the Bronx according to NYPD. I hope that today we'll change it up. Today we're here because we found out that there has been injustice perpetrated by our own people for the past 60 years. When we found out, we said we're going to take action. It is time <coughs> to give credit where credit is due. And when we found out that Honorable Claudette Colvin lives in the Bronx in our midst and has not been mentioned by elementary schools and junior highs and colleges, we got fed up and we couldn't take it. And we said, today we're going to change that. And I hope that you're going to walk out of here knowing more about Claudette Colvin than any other human being associated with the civil rights movement. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, we commit crimes, not NYPD's responsibility. It is us who commit crimes because violent criminals are not strangers to us. They live with us, we love them, and we support them. And when they commit crime, we have to ask if they're strangers. And when law enforcement come and do what they're trying to do, we get upset by how they do it. And there is no better law enforcement in the nation than the NYPD. I don't care what anybody said. They are the best, most professional, trained individuals who get up every single day to make it so that you and I can go home and enjoy our families. Don't let anybody mislead you about that. We commit crime. If crime is to be prevented, it will come from us. And today, I hope that you will walk out of here with that mental preparedness so that you will not be misled the same way we've been misled for 60 years about Claudette Colvin. And today, three things, four things that we're going to do. And I want you guys to pay very close attention because we mean business. We do not waste time. We have one life to live. And there are millions of complaints. But one action is needed, and that action is to take personal responsibility. And that's why we're here. I hope when you walk out of here, you will walk out of here as an individual who takes personal responsibility in your hands. That is our goal. Now, today, we're launching, as it is apparent, a day called Claudette Colvin Rosa Park Day to be celebrated not only here in the Bronx, nationally and internationally. Why do we do that? Because we have an individual who say no, where most men couldn't even say no. A teen who say no, where most adults wouldn't say no. And we're going to change that today. Therefore, from now on, every December 4th, we're going to mobilize the world to celebrate the legacy, the bravery, and the generosity and the vision of this honorable lady before us. I'm so proud that we have her. The <laughs> That's the first thing we will do. The second thing we're going to do, because actually, Claudette Colvin today was March 2nd, 1955. <coughs> On March 2nd, we are going to launch Claudette Colvin Scholarship Fund. <laughs> We're going to make sure that all the corrupted history books will be in the garbage. 
and more and more accurate reflection of the reality will be written and peddled into our schools. And on March checking, we're going to do that. And I hope you're going to work out of here knowing that March checking is the main day. Now, the third thing we are doing here today also, and I don't know how many of you know that the bronze macro is yield not to evil. How many of you know? All of you. The bronze macro says yield not to evil. And today we are launching a play called We Refuse to Yield to Evil. Evil of domestic violence, evil of gang violence, evil of bio attack, evil of racial violence, economic violence, political violence, animal cruelty, even degradation to the environment. All forms of evil, we will recruit all of you to refuse to yield to them. That's the third thing we're going to do. And the last but not least, branch is a place where if you live out of here, and you go anywhere, especially if you go out of state, and people ask you, where are you from? You say, the branch, the conversation is over. <laughs> and if you close your eye when you open it, the guy is gone. And the woman called police. That's the branch. I was in Florida. When I said I was from the branch, I was alone in a matter of two minutes. So today we're going to change that. We're going to move from bronze as the most empowered, the sickest, the most violent, the less participated civically into a peace county where we have the sea balls of the world that mobilize the youth to making the bronze what bronze deserves to be, a county where you can live raise successful families, open successful businesses, and enjoy life while you're working or in your retirement, and nobody will switch in the head. And that's what we're doing today. These are the four things that we'll be doing today. We are very happy and excited to be partnering with Honorable Assemblyman Jose Rivera. <laughs> you know, we have approached a lot of elected officials but God knows the right one for the right purpose. And that was Jose Rivera. Yes. And when we, sat down, when we sat down with him, we told him about Honorable Colvin. He said, I will be the one to sponsor it. And the more we read about her, the happier he becomes. And every day he comes to our office. By the way, Assemblyman Jose Rivera, if you're not getting your service, he's coming to our office lately. <laughs> Almost every time, because he's so excited. So my brothers and sisters, welcome, welcome, welcome on board. We're excited to be changing the bronze so that all of you will enjoy living and raising families here. And from today until uh, December 31st, we ask you to embark on peace endeavors and prevention of the violence. And do not discriminate against anyone. I don't care whether you look different, you say the same faith, or different choices. Every human being deserves protection for his person, his family, his fortunes, and his aunt. Same thing goes with the ladies too. God bless you and welcome on board and welcome to Peace December and welcome to Claudia Colvin Rosa Park Day. Have a blessed event today. <laughs> and so, our Assemblyman, Honorable Jose Rivera. Good afternoon, Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. I, uh, I heard our good friend, the Sheik, said earlier something about when he mentions the Bronx, most people, mostly from outside it and downtown, look the other way. I made it my business. This borough made it his business. And this young lady was part of it. Back in 1997, when we set out prior to 97 to rebuild the Bronx, 
And when we began to rebuild the Bronx, because the Bronx in those days, in the 80s, 70s, 80s, looked like Berlin, 1945, and maybe like Iraq, Afghanistan, looks like today. Bombed out. People being chased out of their home. No one being indicted for committing arsonists for profit. This was another young lady, just like Miss Caldwell. And she also stood up. And she became part of a movement to make change in this borough. So by 1997, this borough was declared one of America's finest cities in 1997 because of the work that people that are standing here, and many of you sitting there, contributed to. We have a, a better looking Bronx, something that we can be proud of. So when I go downtown and I don't see those stores with a Bronx hat, I tell them, you better make me a Bronx hat. So this Bronx hat says, Bronx, New York Public Library. Because the Bronx is a library. This bar is full of history of people who struggle. And I want to thank, I know you're Mrs. Campbell, okay, and I know you had to run out of here by 5.30. Yeah, I, I'm a witness, and then Robert Bond, who I met when he was up on 18 or 20, is making sure he's one of our proud youngsters. I met him when he was about 20. I think he's 50 now, but I should be saying that. Now, there's so many beautiful stories. But you know, today, this is just a small token of my appreciation because the assembly is obsession now. She, mm -hmm. I stay committed, committed that when we begin to begin the process by January 15 to honor the life, the dedication, sacrifices of Dr. Martin Luther King, that I'm going to invite you and Ms. Colvin, and I hope that our DA could be present during that very important moment when we begin to celebrate Martin Luther King and when we begin in February to celebrate Black History Month. And those days, Albany and the rest of the state will hear about your contribution at the age of 15. Yeah. And at that point, we will make sure that that day will be proclaimed the Claudette Colvin Day in the state. So, this is just a token and a deposit towards the real award that you want to <laughs> Before you leave that DA, that young man, you know that we all. So, so many old to so few, like her, you know, small way that young man was the first one to bring out in the open something about K2. Today, today the Glasgow signed a bill. Today, the government has a bill. Because they have signed a piece of legislation. And I hope you visit us in Albany because we got to make sure that it passes both the assembly, which I can guarantee you it will pass, but we have to work hard for the Senate to pass it and then for Governor Cuomo to put his name on it and become a bill, a law in the state of New York, making it take you to be the law. Thank you. And said, talk to me about how he's fed up turning on TV day in and day, and day and out and all the, all the violence in our, in our city, all the violence in, in our borough of the Bronx. He said, we're going to do something about it. I said, whichever way I can help you, I will work with you. He said, no, you don't get it, Assemblyman. We've been hearing from that young man that every other day someone has been killed in 194th Street and Prince Avenue and 196th Street. So what we have here today, Madam DA elect, you know, you got your work cut out, I don't envy you. 
But we, I know you're going to do a great job, and I know you're going to make all of us proud. You're going to do your job because you have always been a professional. And we stand by you. How I really got here, it was because of people like Ms. Colden and Rosa Park. When Rosa Park refused to give up a seat, I was, uh, uh, I used to speak in those days of English. <laughs> That's fluent, broken English in Ocho Beach. It was that moment, I'm a little older than this young lady. It was that moment that inspired me and Puerto Ricans in those days to tell this city, this government, we're not in the South. We're in the South Bronx, but we're not in South of America. And you're not going to treat us like you treat others in this country. So we marched from Section 1, because Section 1 was the area by the rocks where it was segregated. Puerto Rican and African American, Section 1. I'm 79. Listen to me, because you're not going to read it in the books. <laughs> I I went, by 1956, inspired by the work and the dedication of people like Ms. Claudette Colvin and Rosa Park, we marched in 1956. Now, not only can we swim all over Ocho Beach, but we have our barbecue,